Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It is good to see you all. And I want to say it's good to be back from Santa Fe, but that's a hard one to do. <laughs> I had a great week of uh, art and good food and friends and um, soaking in this hot spring. So I don't, all of me's back, but there's a part of my spirit that's still there. So good to be with you all in word and spirit and flesh. And to sense the spirit of God moving in us and around us. I want to welcome the Zoomers who are with us. Good to see their faces. Glad to have them with us. Thanks to Shelly up there on Zoom this morning. Thanks to our singers. We have a, a gift of having Gus and Paul and Joe singing some special music for us and Peggy playing for us. Uh, if you're a visitor, I invite you to fill out one of our visitor cards so we can welcome you and say hello to you. There's a couple of people be, be coming forward to make announcements. But I want to remind you that next week is daylight savings time. So we spring forward and we lose an hour. But if you happen to come early next week, I'll be here and I'll put on some coffee and we can chat until the service. So uh, remember that um, this week is a book group meeting at one o'clock in the sanctuary. I have a few extra books if anybody is welcome to join us. So um, Paul, Eileen, you want to come up and make some announcements? Hello. <laughs> I bet you can't guess what I'm going to talk about, huh? <laughs> I want to make sure everyone knows there are little flyers in the back if you'd like to pick up a flyer about the fair coming up in just two months. I can't believe that it's that soon. Um, and uh, I have a couple of uh, important details to tell you. Um, this time next week, Right after worship service, we'll, we will have a committee meeting. Everyone's on the committee. <laughs> if you can stay for it, that would be wonderful. Um, we will be talking about just what has happened so far, uh, what kinds of things are falling into place. Um, we have a few volunteers that are wanting to get started on the uh, silent auction. So anyway, we have um, news and, and progress to report, but also some immediate plans need to be to be made. Um, two concerns I have. Um, the gentleman who used to drive the tractor back and forth between the two sites, his name is Mike Smith. His parents were founding members of our church. Um, he owns Flat Acres Farm. He is not able to do the back and forth on the tractor this year. Um, he's retiring from that job. And so um, I'm wondering if you or anyone you know could do something like that. He used to pull a, a hay wagon back and forth and it was such a neat way to connect the two sites for the fair. If you don't know anyone that could really go back and forth, it, just bringing, bringing an antique tractor or some kind of a old fashioned vehicle would be kind of a nice feature to have at the fair. Um, so please let me know. Also the youth and some members have talked about having some farm animals here because this used to be such a great farming community. Uh, we have the animals, but we don't have a way to keep them in one spot. So <laughs> if any of you have a portable pen or a fencing type thing that we could put up for a couple of goats or, you know, whatever, we're still talking about exactly what animals we'll have. But if you know of anyone that has a structure like that we could borrow for the weekend, please let me know or Peggy in the office. Any questions or things I can help you with right now? Okay, seeing no hands, thank you. Thanks. Uh, Paul, come on up, and Shelly has an announcement too, so we'll uh, check in up there. Anybody have a cattle dog, maybe, to help with this <laughs> animal roundup thing? 
Uh, I just wanted to talk about the uh, Deacon program. I've got the sign-up sheet in the back for this month, but start thinking about April as well. I've only got two people signed up for next week and two for the week after that, and nobody for the last week of March. So we need to complete the, uh, we need four each week, okay, four people. Uh, so please um, join our deacon group. Uh, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be anything formal, but just sign up on the sheet in the back and we'll have one up there for April uh, shortly. But make sure that we get enough for, uh, for the rest of this month. Uh, one other quick thing is that there are pledge forms in the back, uh, if you don't have yours, if you lost it, if you couldn't find it in your directory, it's it's uh, back there on the back uh, on the back shelf. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Shelly. Morning, Shelly here. Uh, it's Spice Project Day. I've got chili powder and chicken bouillon that needs to be packaged up for the Spice Project, and we're uh, the setup has begun in a Callahan Hall. We need about 10 people, uh, five at each table would be great to have, uh, get those spices packed for delivery this week. Thank you. You guys are gonna get spicy. Thank you all. Let us take a deep breath, bring our full selves to worship as the light comes in and the music leads us. Let us worship God. Good morning. Thank you, Peggy. That was beautiful. Please join me in the call to worship. Creator God, 
We gather together from many places, pasts, and communities to celebrate and worship together as your people. We come to worship God. Jesus, life giver, we celebrate all that brings us together. We are on a journey learning and celebrating. We come to worship Jesus. Spirit of love, we are a living community and we give thanks for the movement of the spirit, ever inspiring, strengthening, moving and challenging us. We come to worship the spirit, amen. Our opening hymn is saying praise to God who reigns above in the red hymnal number 56. Invite the young people, our next generation, to come forward. Anybody know what this flower is? Hi there, Ellery and Declan. You have a love shirt this morning. I like that. How are you guys? Okay. I think Maggie might be coming and we might need a microphone. Mike, do I get this one here? Okay. Uh, does anyone know what this flower is? Yeah, what, hang on. What is it? Hmm? No, put it close. A tulip or something? No, like it's not a tulip, but it looks like it because it has that cup looking thing. Anybody? No, no. How about you guys? Yeah, I don't know either. 
<laughs> Can you hold it a little closer? Okay, it, it looks familiar. I familiar? It's a calla lily. Oh, it's a calla lily. Okay, it's kind I was going to say something like lily. So. Yeah, okay. you're right. You're right. Well, it's and it's purple to match our Lent, Lent thing. But the the reason I got it is that it celebrates International Women's Day, which is this week on Thursday. How many of you have mothers? Yay! Good, good. We all have mothers. And mothers are women, right? And we have this whole month to celebrate women's history. Kind of odd, isn't it? Well, you know, in the Bible, what we hear a lot about is men, right? Male leaders. Jesus is male. God, God is often male. The leaders, all the disciples were male. There's a couple of books in the Bible, like Ruth and Esther, and there's, of course, Mother Mary, Mother of Jesus, but they don't get highlighted as much. They don't get talked about as much. So in our country, we also have a lot of male leaders. And this is a month where we focus on some of the female leaders. And one of the reasons I got this is that I love the Kala Lily. And the Kala Lily was brought to my attention. I didn't used to notice it much as a flower, but it got brought to my attention because there's this artist who takes the lily and makes this beautiful picture. I'm going to hold it up in case Zoomers See it, the Kala Lily. And um, did any, anybody recognize that artist? No. A hundred years ago, she painted this. Would you like a picture of it? See, she showed it to you up close. That was her kind of art that she did. She brought flowers to our attention by painting them up close. And her name is Georgia O'Keeffe. Do you want one? Take it to your mom anyway. Um, and I got to visit her museum in the place where she lived in New Mexico. She's one of my favorite artists. And the reason is that she helped me see things a little differently. She helped me look at things in close attention and paid attention to them. And um, that reminds me of seeing things differently, of looking at things differently. That ever happened to you where something you've been looking at and you haven't really seen it all along and then you look at it and you go, wow, how did that happen? Yeah. Yeah. Anything particular that changes your way of thinking? Yeah. Tell us. Um. So like. I'm sorry. So when I was younger, I would like had this like base camp in like elementary school, and like I've recently visited them and like saw like said hi, but like I looked at them and like they look so different. Oh and, really? Like, yeah. Because like I don't know. That's a great example. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Do you go to school sometimes and you learn something and you look at it differently? Yeah. Or maybe you, you look at your parents differently because they teach you something differently. And you go, wow. Or they accidentally do something like get mad. And you go, my mom gets mad. My parents get mad. Do you have anything you want to share? No? No? Okay, guys. Maggie? Okay, good morning. Good morning. You have Ducky with you. Um, but this... This month I'm, on Sundays, I'm going to be lifting up someone, a woman who is teaching us something about history and recognizing that more. And so each Sunday I'm going to do that. And this Sunday I wanted to share with you an artist who's helped all of us see things just a little differently in our life. And that's what Jesus as a teacher does. Jesus points out these places where things are different. They're not the same. And he walks up to people and he sees them, who, who they are. And he says, Especially women. He, he invites women into community where women didn't really matter at that time. And he says, I see you. I see who you are. And you're important. And the kingdom of God is within you. That's something nobody had said before. Really special teaching. So I want you to be thinking about ways you see things and how you all of a sudden see them very differently. Eyes to see. Flowers to see people to see and encounter. I'm so glad I had time to share with you something that's very important to me. Art always helps me see things differently, and this artist especially. So let us say our prayer together. We are wonderful. We are wonderful. We are kind. We are kind. We are brave. We are brave. We are loved. We are loved. Like your shirt says. Yay, God. Thank you for coming up. Um, give it to Joe. He'll put it back.
for you, a picture to take home, and you can color it. Good morning. It's time for joys and concerns. Um, other than what was in the newsletter, there's nothing really to report. Uh, we do know that Shelly and Roseanne have some family members and friends that are experiencing a lot of difficulties. Is there anyone in the congregation that would like to share something this morning? Desiree? We're missing Don this morning, who usually runs around. <laughs> um, Jeffrey is currently in Louisiana with his family. His grandma's in hospice, and he knows that this is probably his last time visiting her um, while she's alive. So just keep him and his family in your prayers, because transition's always a hard time. I would like to share uh, information about a special friend from our church in Mankato, Minnesota. Many years ago, when Al was looking for a new church, there was a search committee. And one of the people on the search committee was Lois Jonke. Lois Jonke died this last week of uh, Alzheimer's. and. <laughs> She was just the most wonderful person and just was there for us all the time that we were there, 20 some years. And we went camping and you know, just everything that we did, we did with the Jonky family. Well, next uh, Saturday, uh, around 1030, they're gonna have the service Zoomed. Oh, and so we are going to be able to watch that service for, for Lois and uh, we're just so glad we can be able to do that. So Zoomers are pretty good. Yeah. 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 Anything else? Al? Al? On Zoom. Oh, any on Zoom? No. No. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Artie. We come now to a time of prayer in our congregation. I invite you to open the Red Book to page 399. We'll be singing Ubi Caritas with that. Ubi Caritas et amor. Ubi Caritas Deus ibi est. Where true charity and love abide God is dwelling there God is dwelling there for the journey of our lives with its ups and downs with its questions and challenges and with its moments of joy. We thank you for the beauty around us, for the hills and the trees, the pine trees and the beauty of the morning, for the water and the weather, and for all that reminds us of life and life made anew. We are especially thankful for this church, its leaders, all those here who give up their time and talent who give generously. And the quiet of this place, we offer you our own thanks in a time of silence. Mm -hmm. 
say thank you. We realize there is brokenness in us, and we realize that we have not always lived the love to which you call us, sometimes by our actions or inactions, sometimes just by going along with things. We have broken faith with each other and with you. We offer to you our brokenness, loving God, not only asking that we would be forgiven but that your love we would be made whole and invited to live in new ways with Christ's love. Receive our prayers from the depth of and the places where we care, carry that brokenness in this time of silence. Let us continue praying in song. Ubi caritas et amor. Ubi and love abide. God is dwelling there. God is dwelling there. Knowing that we are forgiven and knowing that we are loved, we turn to the world to love it into wholeness. We pray for people in the desert times of their lives, people who are facing famine of body or spirit, people who are tempted to turn away from what is right and just. We come to be peacemakers in this world. And we remember places where there is destruction and death. We especially remember those in Ukraine and Russia who are suffering and grieving all kinds of loss at the hands of men bent on war. We pray for those in Turkey and Syria who have been made refugees by the devastating earthquake. We pray for those affected by the tornadoes in the south and by the snow in the west. As the earth speaks to us of change, we pray for the hearts of the leaders in our country we pray that they may create laws that serve and protect all the people of this land and oh God we pray that we may be citizens who brings healing and wholeness, and that we might be a part of a solution, turning our prayer from words into actions. Bless our journey, we pray. 
sharing the words that Jesus gave to all of his disciples and the language that is most comfortable to you. We pray, our creator who is in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our wrongs as we forgive those who have wronged us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us hear the reading from John this morning. John 3, 1 through 12 and 16 and 17 from the message. There was a man of the Pharisee sect, Nicodemus, a prominent leader among the Jews. Late one night, he visited Jesus and said, Rabbi, we all know you're a teacher straight from God. No one could do all the God pointing, God revealing acts you do if God weren't in on it. Jesus said, you're absolutely right, take it from me. Unless a person is born from above, it's not possible to see what I'm pointing to, to God's kingdom. How can anyone, said Nicodemus, be born who has already been born and grown up? You can't re-enter your mother's womb and be born again. What are you saying with this born from above talk? Jesus said, you're not listening. Let me say it again. Unless a person submits to this original creation, the wind hovering over the water creation, the invisible moving the visible, a baptism into a new life, it's not possible to enter God's kingdom. When you look at a baby, it's just that, a body you can look at and touch. But the person who takes shape within is formed by something you can't see and touch, the spirit, and becomes a living spirit. So don't be surprised, so surprised, when I tell you that you have to be born from above, out of this world, so to speak. You know well enough how the wind blows this way and that. You hear it rustling through the trees, but you have no idea where it comes from or where it's headed next. That's the way it is with everyone born from above, by the wind of God, the spirit of God. Nicodemus asked, what do you mean by this? How does this happen? Jesus said, you're a respected teacher of Israel, and you don't know these basics? Listen carefully. I'm speaking sober truth to you. I speak only of what I know by experience. I give witness only to what I have seen with my own eyes. There is nothing secondhand here, no hearsay. Yet instead of facing the evidence and accepting it, you procrastinate with questions. If I tell you things that are plain as the hand before your face and you don't believe me, what use is there in telling you of these things you can't see the things of God? This is how much God loved the world. He sent me, and this is why so that no one need be destroyed. By believing in God, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending me merely to point an accusing finger telling the world how bad it was. I came to help to put the world right again. Well, that's kind of humiliating. <laughs> As Nicodemus, I want to tell you my side of the story. <laughs> you can tell why I went in the night, right? I didn't want to hear. I didn't want anyone else to hear what Jesus might say to me. But I was more concerned of somebody might see me asking questions. And here I am, a Pharisee. I'm supposed to know these things. I'm the religious leader in my temple. I'm respected. I'm prominent. I've studied the books. 
I've been to the best theological schools. I have the degrees to prove it. I can't be asking questions of Jesus. I'm supposed to know it. I have it right here in my text, right here in the Bible. I know I'm supposed to know this. It's in here. I spent my life studying the religion, the laws, the commandments, the history, the prophets. The I know my Bible. But there's something I don't know in this man. Something he's making. Well, honestly, he's making waves. He's doing things different. He's not following the codes in the temple and the Jewish law. And it troubles me. My role as a religious leader in the temple is to make sure people follow the law. I lead an exemplary life. I tithe 10% of my income to the temple. I live by the rules, the laws, the bylaws, the committees that we have formed. I do things just right. It's there in the paper. I can point to it. This is the proof. And yet Jesus is doing something very different. And he's a rabbi. He should know these things. But the thing is, he knows all of this, and he's still doing something very different. He's healing people. He's liberating people. It reminds me of the story of Moses liberating people and saying, go into the desert. I'm going to lead you. I'm going to do things different. It's by the Spirit. I'm going to feed you manna. I'm going to provide a way across that water that you have to cross. I'm going to do these things. And Jesus is coming and doing these things. And here all this time I've spent talking about them and teaching these things, and I'm not doing them because I don't know how to do them. And that's so embarrassing. And so I go at night to have this conversation with Jesus, and I get more than a bargain for because he's saying things I don't understand. What is this about being born from above? He knows I've already been born, and now he said I have to be born again. How is that possible? That's what I say to him. How is it possible? Try to imagine being born again. And he, and he says it's a different kind of birth. It says it's from above. But it's the spirit. It's the wind that blows in the trees. You know what I'm talking about because you've had wind blow on you, right? You've also had wind that's been destructive. Wind that goes so fast. It's a tornado. Or it blows things that you don't want it to blow. But it's also refreshing. It moves things. It plants seeds. So I'm trying to think, how's God like that? And I remember from Genesis, the very beginning, it says, and the Spirit hovered over the waters. Genesis, that's the very beginning of how creation starts. Now, you probably call it the Big Bang, right? You've got this science, these physicists and these explorers, and, and, and they've come up with this thing about the Big Bang. This big explosion happened, and it created the stars and the planets, and it's all put in place. You know all that, but what we had was the spirit. That's how, but see, I like to ask you sometime, how did the Big Bang happen? Now, you can probably explain it to me, but there was something there that made it bang, right? <laughs> there was something there that made the waters move. There was something there in the desert that led the people to the promised land. And here it is, Jesus doing that. He's healing people. He's doing those signs and wonders of God. And I'm wondering, how could he do those things? It must be from God. And so God has drawn near to the people. And then he goes and tells them, you remember that back, back when we talked about that? He goes and tells them the spirit of God is in you. It's not necessarily what we teach. So I know he's going to get in trouble. He's interrupting the temple life. He's interrupting our worship. And he's saying, it's not necessarily in here in the temple, but it's out there where the Spirit of God is moving. And it comes and visits us through each of us. But he's doing something different out there, and I can't figure it out. So I want to follow him too, but I am a religious leader. And there's certain things expected of me. And Jesus, what I'm trying to tell you is that he does something so different. And he moves things from my head, the intellect, 
the knowledge into my heart. That's a long way down, right, isn't it? For what we know intellectually, what we can point to in the text, what we can say, here it is in the Bible. We could say, here it is. God says it. It's right here in the laws of the church. This is how we operate. I just wanted to know what his secret was. I wanted to be able to do those things. Healing the blind. Setting people free from their sin. Saying it's not so much about these things. You know, at the end he talks about, that he, you know, he hasn't come to condemn the world and to point out what people are doing wrong, which is what we in the temple do. We say, you know, this is, this doesn't work. It's not, you can't do those things. And Jesus says, I didn't come to do that. I came to save the world. I came to, to liberate it, save it, heal it. And to show you, you can do the same things. You can do the same things. And, and, it's, and sometimes you know you can do it, right? Do you get that feeling that this is right? This is where God wants me to be. This is where I feel full of the Spirit. So do you feel that in the church? Do you feel the Spirit drawing the church into being the church? And maybe it's not so much what we know up here, but it's what feels our connection to God and to the Spirit that leads us out from here to live generously and to do those signs and wonders that point to God. I think the Spirit of God is here. It's working in ways that maybe we don't know. Maybe we can't even point to. But you got some things coming to you, don't you? you got a new leader coming somewhere. It's going to bring a spirit here. Are, are you open? To who shows up? To how God shows up? We have a general sense of mission. Inviting God into that mission. That unexpected, that spirit, that wind that blows, that water, we can't control it. So think about that. How's that the direction of the church? Amen. I invite our music softly and tenderly, an old, old hymn.
is for you and for me. Come home, come home, come home, come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling. beautiful. Will you join me in the invitation to communion, communion as printed in the bulletin? We are invited now to share in the greatest celebration ever imagined. body of God's love. And although this celebration has been going on generation upon generation, and all the invitations were sent out eons in advance, it is a come as you are celebration. So come, as you are plain, sorrowful, joyous, Come, come to the table where you are more welcome and at home than anywhere else in the world. Sharing in this feast, this memory, this table where Jesus sat out with his friends, his disciples to celebrate the new covenant, a new way of being in the world. And he did something that was very common and practical. He had bread with them and he took it and he broke it and he was giving them some way to remember him. He said, this is the body, my body broken for the world, for the world is broken. But we're here to celebrate and heal it and to find ways to recognize the body broken and made whole. He said, take it, eat, this is my body and do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the juice, the wine, something that was meals, something every day. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. This is me, my body and my life poured out for the forgiveness of sin. And whenever you eat of this bread or drink of this cup, you are proclaiming my death and my resurrection. So today we eat the bread, drink from the cup, and we continue to live the story of resurrection in our midst. So come now, for all things are ready.
Let us join together in our prayer of thanksgiving. God of new life, with joy we have received this sacrament of bread and wine, giving you thanks for Jesus Christ, our peace and our hope. Unite your church throughout the world in continuing Jesus' ministry of love and servanthood. That your name be praised in all the earth. Amen. Thank you. Paul, you're coming forward. And did, did you go get served? Morning again. Uh, talk about gifts. What about Gus and Paul and uh, Joe with that uh, rendition of that song? It was fantastic. You guys are so good. Uh, before I start talking about our stewardship campaign, I do want to thank uh, Melissa Kelsey, Shelley Llewellyn, and Nathan Oblicki and his family for their presence in this church and their willingness to get up in front of all of us and to tell us about what Be the Church means to them. Uh, I personally want to thank each and every one of you for doing that. It really helps a lot. Uh, we, the Covenant Commitment Team, started this campaign a little over a month ago by creating a stewardship letter <laughs> I won't tell you where it is, but uh, in, which we tried to in which we tried to provide a way to show all of you how your pledged funds and the other contributions you make are used within UCCPH to provide the experience you enjoy when you attend. There's a lot that has to be done behind the scenes by the pastor, all the ministry and leadership teams, plus the time, talent, and treasure that we collectively provide. 
without all of us participating in the life of the church, it would be a lot less satisfying experience and the church would struggle to survive. To be truthful, the numbers are so far a bit disappointing. As the middle of last week, only 21 pledge forms had been returned and received by our financial secretary. We know there are a number of you who continue to consistently support the church monetarily and without completing a pledge form, which is fine, and we appreciate your continuing support. Based on current results, it looks like we'll be about $4,000 under our budgeted giving for the year. That being said, not having completed pledges makes it difficult to plan going forward. Without having an idea of what funds are coming in, we as church leadership can't be sure if whether or not we can fulfill our obligations to you as a congregation. I don't mean to convey doom and gloom. We certainly aren't shutting the doors anytime soon. I'm just asking those of you who have not completed a form or communicated with Don in some other way, your support for the church to please do so. We aren't going to hold anyone's feet to the fire about this. Uh, we know that people have things going on in their lives. The circumstances can change. Lots of things happen. Nobody's going to come knocking on your door and say, where's your pledge? Where's your pledge? We hope that you'll find your experience at UCCPH worthy of helping support us financially as well, and that you will take the time to let Don know the level at which you can provide that support. And just to be clear, the financial secretary is the only person who knows what those individual contributions are. You're not sharing that with anybody else in the church. <clears throat> okay, so here's my ask. Please help us out by letting us know at what level you can commit for 2023. Contact Don by email, phone, stagecoach, mail, however, or bring your completed pledge form next Sunday and put it in the collection plate. For those of you who may not have those forms or don't know where yours might be, I have some in the back, as I mentioned earlier, uh, sitting back there waiting for, your, <clears throat> for you to fill them out and, and send them back in. So again, thank you again for your past support and please continue to help support UCCPH. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, please rise for the doxology, and we're going to be led by some superb voices. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host, Creator, Son, and Holy Ghost. From all that dwell below the skies, let songs of joy and 
let peace of will on earth be sung through every land by every tongue. Amen. Thank you. Nice, nice. Thank you. Our closing hymn is in the red book, 719. Uh, the first verse we'll all sing. The second verse is for women. And the fourth, I was going to say third, but it's the fourth verse is all of us again. children with my blessing never alone waking sleeping I am with you you are my own in my love's baptismal river I have made you the blessing I give every week. It is from the book of Numbers. I, the Lord, will bless you and keep you. I will give you peace. I, the Lord, will smile upon you and give you peace. I, the Lord, will lift up my bright light, my countenance, and give you that spirit of God within you now and always. Amen. Amen.